Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Jessica here and if you are new, welcome to the journey. Hopefully by the end of this video you guys want to subscribe to your girl. But yeah, so I have not done a sit down video in a while and I did promise you guys I would. But nevertheless, I've been pushing out my vlogs each week. So I'm still here, I'm still consistent so you guys know and have seen my face. So this video is like I said a sit down video I have my Starbucks here because I just left work and I came home to come and chat to y'all and I've had it for a while so as you guys can see the whip is disappearing I bought it and then came home and was doing some stuff so I got the caramel ribbon crunch frappuccino blended beverage normal the only thing that's different is I did a uh, instead of whole wheat and all the other milks I did almond milk so yeah and then I got something to eat as well got everything croissant on and roasted ham sandwich as you can see here this is pretty much breakfast but it's okay so <laughs> I want to talk to you guys about the whole job situation so yeah I quit my job I quit my job if you guys have been following me then you guys know that recently I changed jobs so that job that I changed to I left <laughs> I left and there's there is, it's crazy because I was so excited about the job and I I'm gonna actually show you guys a clip of when I was you know going off about this little job so those, those I changed my job again I did I changed my job again this job I feel like it's a little bit more me or I'm hoping it's a little bit more me again I'm in HR but I've never been a recruiter like a hardcore recruiter yes I've recruited for um, my two jobs ago but I've never it wasn't my actual title the recruiting was just amongst the HR tasks that I had before so with this job I'm the so-called hardcore recruiting and I must say, I wasn't qualified based on the fact that I haven't recruited already and they wanted someone who has recruiting background. But, I don't know. I guess I was able to win them over. And, you know, I just told them that I am trainable. We all are trainable, you know. Yeah. That was me and that wasn't that long ago. So... Let me just tell you my journey or my job journey here in Canada and how I came to where I am right now. So I moved to Canada in 2015. I moved to Canada with clearly no Canadian work experience. So what happened was I did HR, I mean HR, I did HR in Jamaica and I went to school in Jamaica for HR. Now the option was, am I going to come here and go to school? Am I going to come here and just figure it out? Like try my best to not have to go to school? Like I just didn't know what to expect. So when I moved here, clearly the first thing that was on my mind was getting a job. Went all over the place trying to find a job. So I went to this job agency, I went to this government thing. Like I went everywhere. And then finally, by word of mouth, I was able to get a job in a real estate brokerage and the thing about that first job here in Canada that made me fall in love with the real estate I always had it in my mind that I wanted to do uh, HR but then when I got into this new field this new industry it just opened a new kind of worms and I was on the path to trying to see if I could become a real estate agent uh, there was a roadblock <laughs> while pursuing that and then right now things have completely changed So if I did not have that roadblock, I would have been a real or I would have been a realtor right now But because of that roadblock And then things have totally changed. It's just like wow the process is much harder now and Because of how things are going on in Canada or in Toronto I'm not surprised that they made becoming a realtor way much harder I'm not surprised at all I'm not surprised but in the near future someday I still want to get into real estate so let's see maybe five years from now I'm going to be calling a realtor just I don't know but I'm still in HR so like I said I was in HR in Jamaica and I moved here 
and had no HR experience in HR. But of course, naturally, because that's my experience, I leave that on my resume, even though I'm working at a, a real estate brokerage. Now, what I was doing at a real estate brokerage, I was an admin, so I was just doing all the paperwork. So nothing too crazy, you know, anybody, well, I would think anybody can do it if you really want it. But you know, deep down, I always knew, like, I want to be in HR. That's what I like doing. So I started applying to places and it just seemed like no one wanted to give me a chance. No one. Why? Because I just did not have experience in Canada. And not only did I not have experience in Canada, I was in Canada less than a year. So who's really going to hire me in HR for less than a year in Canada? Canadians are so uptight about work experience in Canada. doesn't matter where in the world you came from. They're so uptight about work experience in Canada. So I knew it was going to be a tough road. I knew it was going to be a hard road for me. But you know, I just applied. Guys, I applied like crazy. Roadblock after roadblock after roadblock after roadblock. So uh, I got this chance to finally get into I don't know, I think with what they were looking for, they weren't looking for someone who was way too much in HR, like knew too much. They I, they literally wanted someone who, you know, is up and coming. Because with that position, it was a lot of simple paperwork for HR. It's simple stuff. But all that simple stuff got my foot in the door. And so I was grateful regardless. And truth be told, when I went for that interview, I did not get a job. I did not get a job, but the person who they originally wanted, they decided to take another offer. So that felt back on me. You know, you'd have normal emotions, we're human beings. So I felt a little way, but I didn't care. I wanted to get an HR and that was my foot in the door. So once they called me back and said, are you still interested? Before this lady finished her sentence, I was just like, yeah. What do you want me? You know, it was my first re resignation in Canada and because the real estate firm is so small, you know, it was like, do you have to leave? Do you have to leave? Do you have to leave? Kind of thing. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah. And not to say that I wasn't grateful, you know, they made me want to get into real estate. But just know that if I got into real estate, I would never work there. <laughs> But I would definitely join another real estate firm. During that time, it was a rough. And you have to understand, if it is that you are an immigrant, you're moving from one country to another country, just know it is hard. And it's harder when you see other people around you looking like they're progressing. That's hard. When you see other people around you looking like you're progressing, because at the end of the day, you're new, you want to be happy, you want to be um, financially stable, you want to see that there is growth in your life in this new country. So I had that little point where I was like, what's happening? What's really happening? But anyways, I got my step in the door, but I knew once I started that job, I could not stay here. As much as the workplace was such a relief from my real estate job, it was such a relief. It was just more, you know, more human friendly. I enjoyed working there. So I knew I couldn't stay there only because of the level of HR that I was doing. I need to progress in life. And if I'm doing simple stuff, simple stuff that is not much of an HR spectrum, I'm not going to be able to grow, right? And as much as I loved working there, I just knew I, I couldn't stay there. And uh, I was giving myself one more year to stay there. I was giving myself one more year to stay there, however, unfortunately, I was kicked out. <laughs> this company it was a tourism company and a tourism company that does expeditions around Canada on water so the thing about it is COVID hit and because we are on water 
COVID hit us first. So as much as people were still like at, at work and still confused and still, you know, whatnot. So you probably, I don't know if you guys remember, but there was this big thing about cruise ships and this and that, we are cruise ship. And it was just like, Don, you guys cannot go sailing. You guys can't go. So we had to start canceling um, the, the trips. They're making it known that this is not something to stay. This is staying for a while. And so we got hit first. We were canceled. And so everything, we have to be given refunds. And the worst part about it, it was our best year ever. In terms of, you know, people coming to join expeditions. Everything. It was our best year ever. So it was such a blow to the company when COVID hit. And then we, could, we just couldn't go on the expedition. We had to be returning the money. And so with that, a lot of people were like, so what's gonna happen? Oh, and I didn't mention to you, this company was also a family owned company. So the real estate agency was a family owned company and this company was also a family owned company, but it was much bigger. Now when I say much bigger, real estate had about five of us working there, five, four of us working there, whereas this company had about 30 of us working there. So like I said, much bigger. And you had departments and stuff like that. So yeah so excuse me so unfortunately during that period the early period of covid some people were let go and obviously it's it's hard it's hard and because you just don't know you don't have the security this and that and, and so forth so i knew that the company was trying very hard to keep the rest of us there they were trying they were trying to figure it out but unfortunately I was also I was on a chopping block. It was one of the hardest things to ever deal with because I have never been like a oh, company ever in life. I, I've never experienced this. So as much as it was such a blow to me, it was so difficult. As I got off the phone with them, I started bawling my eyes out. Started bawling my eyes out. And the thing about it is, at that time, uh, it was now locked up. So it was now locked down, so all of us were now working from home. It was easy for us to work from home because we had days when we were working from home. So it was very easy. That, that transition was easy for us. Uh, many times, we'll go over each other's houses and work. Our department will go to each other's houses and work. So it was we understood that culture before. It was now locked down. We were all at home. Everybody across the board was at home. And they're still trying to keep us all there. Well, whoever was left, they're still trying to keep us there. So unfortunately, um, I... I got a chop and whatever but the good thing about it is even though I've never experienced something like that it was a very difficult moment for me I still knew at the end of the day it wasn't because of my performance it was just because it is what it is that was what was happening they chopped us in different increments so five people this day five people like a month after five people another month after so even my HR manager she got let go too eventually Luckily for Canada, it had a good relief program where um, employ employment insurance where you can go on these programs to be able to survive still. Girl had bills to pay, alright? <laughs> Girl had bills to pay. So I, was, I was worried about that too. But yeah, as I applied for that, the next, I think it was the next week, money was in my account and then every month after that, money was in my account. So, big up Canada for that. So of course, um, I had to, you know, go on the job hunting thing now. Everybody, oh, and then everybody around me was just working from home. So it was it seemed like I was the only one who got like, oh, so every time people were talking about it, I was just like silent, like, okay. <laughs> Good for y'all, but I'm here struggling, trying to find a job. So I, found, I finally got interviewed for a position. It was another admin position. It's almost like COVID was a blessing for me because once I started that job, it was even more clear to me that I had to leave the last job. Yes, I did plan to leave the job a year from then, but I didn't want to be pushed out. Who wants to be pushed out? I want to leave on my own terms. But when I started that new job, it was crazy the amount of HR things I was not doing. And it's because of the type of company, the correlation with this admin and that admin just didn't connect. So it was like one of the best things in disguise for me to be able to go 
into that company and do the broad learning of all these HR tasks. Yes, they were from the bottom. I learned so much. As much as I needed that job, I still, of course, I want to progress in life. I want to progress. I'm not made to be an admin. I've been an admin for many years in Jamaica. Like, I'm past admin stage. So, as much as, you know, I was in a kind of, I was in the admin role and I, I, and I used to tell my friends all the time, I was like, why is it that I'm always getting these admin jobs? And when I said, why is it I'm always getting these admin jobs? You know, like, when you have your resumes in different places, like I had my resume on Indeed, I had my resume on LinkedIn, excuse me, and constantly people from admin jobs or these little jobs that have nothing to do with me will come to me to say, hey, we have an admin position, da 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 da. And I used to be like, why are you coming to me? I'm already an admin, like you're not gonna pay me anymore, you're not gonna teach me anymore, like stop. So. I wanted to be in that point where I'm doing and working with policies, right? I'm creating programs. I'm a meeting with managers, like something above what I was doing. So I decided, okay, well, I'm going to try and see if I can find jobs as a coordinator, HR coordinator, because like I said, I'm done with this admin stuff. Like me and admin is just no longer. And so I wasn't even there long. I was not even there long. I, I was there for like a year or something, I think. Started there in 2020 sometime. And I left last year. 2021? I was there for a year or something. I was there for a year or something. I haven't had my sandwich. Hmm. You guys know I have on braces. These black stuff are gonna be all over my teeth. I'm so sorry. Mmm. <laughs> now fast forward. So let's fast forward to the job that I left recently. <laughs> so what had happened was, like I said to you guys, I'm very unhappy. I decided, let me see if I can get into something else in HR because me and admin, like these people don't want me to get out of admin at all. They just don't want me to get out of admin. So I was just like, okay. I did a little recruiting when I was at the first job, not the first job, not the real estate, the first HR job. Let me see if I can just go into full-time recruiting. So, uh, the thing about that now is, you have to be ready to just recruit and nothing else. And as much as, I just wanna get these people jobs. So, I applied to be a recruiter, and I was applying to some recruiting jobs. And I knew, because my background is not recruiting, I would also have some trouble in that department. But nevertheless, desperation was on me and I wanted to get out of that job. So I finally got a call from a, a person telling me that, I know you don't have a recruiting background, but do you want to come in for an interview? And of course. Hello? Yeah. What allowed me to put a foot in the door was because I had extensive onboarding background. So this was recruiting slash onboarding. Being a new person on the block, and they told me that the company is growing and the company is growing they want to hire at least three other persons so in total they want to hire four people so i'm just like oh this is great this is good this is really good so this means that the company is really growing and whatnot so when i went to the company and i did my interview and i saw the office i was like oh it's a little nice office it's small but it's nice um you're comfortable where you sit uh the place is clean it's in a building very close to where I live. And then I just work from home. So win, win right there. And then they decided, okay, we're gonna train you. Baby, that's all I need. That's all I need. I just need someone to say, okay, I wanna see this girl. She looks like she knows what she wants. Let's go for it. I started working there. I was getting the training. 
yeah. So now the thing about recruiting, which I found out and the reason why I left is because I am HR. I had to come out of HR to realize that I am HR. I am not just recruiting. Recruiting is such a small sector of the whole HR that I miss doing everything else. With this type of recruiting, because of course every company is different, it's just for warehouses. It just seemed like it wasn't going anywhere. Like, where is this going? I'm recruiting for the same company. All I'm doing is calling resumes all day and trying to figure out if this person for can go to the warehouse. So it was nothing to it because with these warehouses, you can send anybody. There's no really vetting. And half the people lying anyways, and even if they're lying, we're still sending them because we need to fill the orders. We need to fill the orders for the warehouse because the warehouse has such a huge turnover. I was recruiting for the same warehouse over and over and over and over and over. Where are we going? And I get it. That is recruiting. If you're a recruiter for a specific kind of company, that is it. I need I need more stuff to do. I can't just be sitting down talking to y'all each day, talking about yes, miss, I want the job. No, ah. Mm. Why do you have to finish? Like honestly, where was I? The manager was also a big reason why I fled. I fled and never turned back. I don't know how to tell you guys, but it's like 70% because I just didn't like just only recruiting. I make it work, but 70% because I didn't like the manager either. Just make it work. It don't add up to 100, but I don't care. I fled the scene so quickly. Now, the thing about the position I'm in now, baby love, baby love, look for me. I can do any job. I can do any job. At this point, I'm just like, I don't care if technically on paper I'm not qualified for your job. I'm going to apply for all of them, every single thing. Somebody's going to call me. Somebody's going to call me. Somebody called me. And it's the, just the best moment for the best time. The stars were just aligning. It just made sense when they called me. I was so happy. They called me. I did the first interview. Oh, it's excellent. Did the second interview? Oh, it's excellent. I'm feeling good about myself because with this position, let's say from an admin, it's like three positions up, one position less than a manager. You know what I mean? So I was ready and I just, I was just, I just couldn't believe that these people call me. And because these people call me, I'm just like, all right, Jess, it's now or never. Do or die. You have to just figure this interview out. You have to figure out how you're gonna take charge of this interview. Y'all, if everything looks different, I'm sorry, my battery died. God was on my side, I'm gonna get the job. And a lot of these things that they do in this type of work, you have to just take initiative and learn them. And a lot of what people in my position deal with, deal with managers, yes, but also we have a lot of um, big stuff dealing with, like policies, company policies, laws of the, the country in terms of HR. Right now I'm, I'm working on a project um, dealing with PIP and PIP. So basically looking at the performance of individuals in the workplace and putting this plan in place. If it is that this work person is not doing their, their job and not working to the best of their ability, they're not helping out the company, there's something that's not connecting, you put this plan in place for them in order to either create some improvement or chopping block. So it's a project that I'm dealing with. This is something that I'm gonna to present to managers so that managers understand what is required of them, what happens when you have an employee that you know is not performing well. So of course, this is not necessarily something that you wanna to do to get someone out. It's just there to see if you can make the improvement of this person. And if there's no way, shape or form, there's any sort of improvement going to happen, then chopping block. But it is, for improvement and for performance. Things like that, not, not just paper pushing that I did with admin work. So, 
Um, and then of course I have way more projects to deal with. That's just what I'm dealing with currently. And so there's way much more things aligned with this position where I feel like, okay, I'm doing something with life other than sign a paper or giving an employer paper. And of course, I have not abandoned recruiting at all. I'm still recruiting. Uh, the best part about it is I'm not just recruiting for a warehouse. I'm recruiting for positions in the company. So like for now, I'm recruiting for a customer service rep for the company. And I'm also recruiting for a warehouse position. The company has a warehouse. So, and then there are other positions that are going to come. And the good thing about it also is I'm the only one in charge. I don't have to look left or right. So if I'm doing the recruiting process, I don't have someone in the back of my ear trying to say like, just what is happening da, 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 for a warehouse. Back off. Um, I have a way more to go. It doesn't end here. So what I'm doing right now is I am steadily revamping my HR business. It's just a joy for me to be able to do something that I enjoy. And um yeah i had a roadblock it's just unfortunate i wear everything on my sleeves so when baby girl is like going through it you know and especially because you're doing something on your own i don't have other people helping me it can't get her off so i am currently trying to revamp my hr business and i'm also trying to revamp my black success business both by which are in the description below so please go ahead and check it out also what's in the description below is my contact information on my IG follow me there um, yeah so of course if you have any questions for me hit up your girl of course I answer everyone and I noticed too that there is quite a few people who have reached out to me on Instagram in terms of uh, jobs one two immigration and three just learn about Canada I appreciate you guys and you guys know I've answered every single person I don't see why I don't I shouldn't I wouldn't you know and if I don't have the answers I always find I always go to someone and ask them like right now I have a friend who is in immigration she deals with immigration and you know her business is going well she's legit so you know I can always push people towards her and say hey if you need immigration if you have immigration questions or you know you need assistance I know a person and she's good so yeah <laughs> um, I'm very happy with life as it is right now I'm very happy with the control that I have I feel like I have a, a good sense of control of life right now and it's only up from here obviously one of the best things about this job is that I don't have anybody over my shoulder. I hate that. Yes, I have a manager, clearly, but she got her stuff to do. I am in my own office, hey. But it's just great that once you have like a, a set, set amount of tasks to do and you just go in your office and you just do everything. I don't have any deadlines yet. But right now, as someone who is new in the company, I'm able to get my get my foot in the door. My feet are wet at a comfortable place in the job. And I'm at a place where, oh, and this company, I go in every day. Um, it's gonna eventually be hybrid, but because I'm new and I'm HR, and I'm HR in a company that, you know, doesn't have much HR in Canada, I am the HR face in the company so I have to you know be there have everybody be familiar with an HR being at that location because HR has never been at that location get them to not fear HR because I'm not scary I promise you I'm not scary so you know just being a friendly face I do my daily walk arounds talking to people saying hey how's the day going da, da, da. make them comfortable with me being there because that's the aim I want everybody to be comfortable with me and then so when it becomes hybrid, you know, everybody will be like, you know, okay to come to me. I'm, I'm okay person. I don't mind. I don't bite. So that's how everything is right now. I hope you guys like this video. If you guys have any questions in terms of starting from the bottom, now we're here. I will be able to, you know, help you, guide you. If you're stressed out and you need somebody to talk to, I'm also here. I'm friendly. I promise you. Scouts honor. I'm friendly um, please go ahead and leave your comments 
again the comments will definitely help me like my video again liking will definitely help me um and i'll see you guys in my next video bye <laughs> oh don't forget to subscribe